Hi guys, good morning and welcome. My name is Primus Veku um, here at Primus Learning. Uh, welcome to Primus Learning. Um, this is yet another uh, video um, for you. Uh, some people requested that we do a video on uh, big data processing. And so I want to use AWS EMR to uh, help you show step-by-step -step how to process big data workloads using um, um, AWS EMR. EMR is an AWS service. So you can see here, it is a managed cluster platform that simplifies running big data frameworks. So some, <clears throat> some of the frameworks uh, that uh, EMR um, runs includes uh, Apache Hadoop, it includes Apache Spark, and um, these are used to process and analyze vast amounts of data, right? So these engines, these Hadoop frameworks, uh, Apache framework, these are used to analyze huge, large, huge, huge, huge data sets. So using these uh, related frameworks, and that, of course, the frameworks are open source. That's one thing you have to note. They are open source and you can process data for analytic purposes, business intelligence, and so on and so forth, right? So uh, those who are involved in business analytics, they want to gain insights from huge, large data sets. Remember, uh, the big data set are, is data that has some characteristics, which we mentioned in an earlier vi video. We said that big data workloads um, are voluminous. <clears throat> so you have the, the three Vs there. Uh, velocity, you talk of velocity, you talk of the volume because the volume is high. The velocity is, 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 is really huge and the variety is so large, <clears throat> it's so extensive. <clears throat> Sorry, the, var <clears throat> the variety is so extensive. So you have different different Vs there. Uh, v, the first V standing for volume. So the volume of data that comes in from different sources is so huge. Let's say <clears throat> data that comes in from Facebook, from <clears throat> IoT devices, from different places, right? From Twitter, from um, <clears throat> YouTube, and so on, streaming data, all kinds of, you know, a lot of data is generated today um, over the internet. And so that type of data is called big data. It comes from different sources, different and in different varieties. Varieties here simply means in different forms, in different either um, text format, video format, just mixed messages, emails, and so on and so forth. So huge, large data sets are generated today and, uh, and could be used for business intelligence purposes to design or to get, gain insight um, for companies to, to progress, right? And so to do this, you need some sort of framework to be able to process large data sets. EMR pro provides you with the platform that you can use to run um, these large data sets, right? And um, Amazon EMR also let you transform and move large amounts of data into and out of other AWS data stores like S3, like DynamoDB and so on and so forth. So guys, that's what we want to look at today. We want to hands-on show you how to uh, use EMR. And how? what are the step-by-step -step processes that we'll follow today? First of all, there are some prerequis prerequisites we we'll have to create an S3 bucket. We'll name it this. We'll just name the bucket uh, Big Data Demo Bucket EMR Pro Primus Learning. And then we'll create three folders inside this, this um, bucket. We'll call one data source. We'll call the other data output and the other EMR logs. After that, we'll create an EMR cluster. I think we'll have to, first of all, create the EMR cluster before creating this because it takes about 15 minutes or 10 minutes to get that cluster running. Once we do that, we'll create the script to be used for processing data. And of course, we'll run our Spark job. So let's go ahead and first of all, get started with creating an EMR cluster. Then we'll come back to the rest of uh, the, the, the stuff, right? Then we'll create a, a bucket and, and these uh, partitions or folders. And of course, we'll look at the script together. All right, let's go ahead, guys. So let's go to EMR. See, this is a service named EMR, which is Manage Hadoop Framework. <clears throat> so we'll create a cluster called Primus Learning EMR. 
uh, dash EML. Let's put dash EML. All right, this is our cluster. And you see for logging, you want to give it an S3 path that this cluster has access to. So we'll just give it, uh, uh, so yeah, I see. So let's create a bucket first so that we can give it a path here. Um, or let's let's leave the path. Let's leave the logs to be put in this path. So the bucket, it will create a bucket and put the logs inside. It will call it AWS logs, and this will be the, the num number to identify it. US is two, so it's in Ohio region and so on and so forth, elastic map reduce and so on. So we'll use this, this, uh, this one for logging. And so the version you want to select, I want us to use 6.60. So 6.60 is the version we want to use. And the applications you want to select should be Spark because the job we'll be running will be a Spark job. You see, it has Spark, it has Hadoop, it has Yarn and uh, Zeppelin. These are all, uh, Hadoop frameworks, right? These are software that have been developed for Hadoop uh, use cases or for, you know, for data processing using the Hadoop framework. All right. So I have a key pair already here. So I'll select this key pair. If you don't have a key pair, just click here and then go here, go to the console, to the EC2 console and go to key pairs and just create yourself a key pair. So you just do that give it a name, maybe Primus, blah, 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 <clears throat> and then leave it at .pem and just hit create. If you didn't have a key pair, that's it for you. You can create your key pair. All right, so I have this key pair. I will use it. This existing key pair, it's called uh, Primus Learning Keys. So I'll use that, leave everything defaulted. So leave everything on default and go ahead and create this cluster. So we'll go ahead and create this cluster. So it, it, you see it's provisioning. It will take some time to provision and all that. And you remember it was, it, it gave us three core uh, two core instances. It will give us three, two core instances and it will give us, um, you know, one master instance. So let me show you an example. Let me do a second create while this one is creating and I'll show you an example of what, what I'm talking about. So you see, once you select the version and select, so that's the version and you select the applications, you see it's asking you for the number of instances. This will be easy to note, easy to instances that it will create for you. One will be a master instance that will control the work that is going to the slave instances or the notes, right? So you have three, and this is the, 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 the automatic, um, instance type that it uses, leave this for now because you want to process your thing faster. You can have termination protection if you want, and then an auto termination as well. So you select your key pair and you create. Once you create with this three, it will give you one master. You see, it specifies here, one master node and two core nodes. It will give you that. You can increase it up to any number that you want. I was reading an article and it told me there, there's a cluster, the biggest cluster that exists is about 8,000 nodes. So about 8,000 uh, EC2 instances running inside one, um, in, inside a cluster. So that was that was interesting for me. All right, so we have our cluster. It is starting, it will process, it will run for like, um, let's say 15 or 10 to 15 minutes and create, and then it will be waiting for workloads. Now it's still bootstrapping, it's still doing its work and all that. All right, so that's done. Let's go to um, S3. So let's go to S3 and go to buckets and create a bucket with the name we selected. So we chose a name, let's give it a name here. You see big data demo bucket, EMR Primus Learning. So this is the name I chose to give my bucket. It will correspond, it will correspond to the name I will use um, on my job. So one, you want the bucket, very important, else you'll not be able to fetch your data and all that. You want the bucket to be in the same region as your EMR cluster. Yeah, our EMR cluster was in US East, two, uh, US East 2. And so you want to put this bucket in US East 2. All right. So once you've done that, you can enable versioning here. And the rest are same, encrypt data using SSE, that's the S3 uh, encryption service here. 
and everything looks good, just create your bucket. Once you've created your bucket, the bucket has something EMR on it. You have to create three folders inside or two folders for now. Let's create two folders. You called one, you let's call one data source. And create and call the next one data output and create. All right, see it's encrypted. The data that will be stored here will be encrypted as well. All right, so we have this. You could create a another folder called EML logs. And on the EML log section I showed you earlier, you select this path directly. That's why I didn't create. I, I you know, I, I was thinking we could create this earlier, but that's fine. It will store the logs elsewhere. We'll still figure out where the logs are. All right, so this is the data source. So this is where the, your data source will be coming. And this is where the data output will be stored. So once we've processed our job, the data output will be stored here. But here is where the source is. All right. Quick, quick thing. You may be thinking, hey, how, how, will, how are we to get the data? Where is the data coming from? All right. We'll generate some data using uh, our script. So let's go to our script. Let's look at our script together. All right, so this is a script that I put together for just for this workload, right? So what, what does this script do? It sim simply we are um, getting the Spark session. So we're importing a Spark session and we're using PySpark, right? PySpark.sql. So from PySpark.sql, want to import a Spark session. That's a package I would use. And then from PySparkSQL.functions, we'll import run and uh, run end. Uh, and so once you've imported these, very important to import them. You want to define a data source path and a an output path. So we've defined our input as data source path as this bucket. You see, this is the way we named this bucket: Primus Learning, uh, pre, uh, Big Data Demo Bucket EMR Primus Learning. And then we we created a data source. So this is a data source, and we created a data output. You see why we created those parts inside this bucket. So we have the data output. Now we will generate data. We will generate a large, large chunk of data at a, a, about a million records. That's huge. We'll generate that into a large data set.csv file. So we'll generate CSV data and it will store that data, you know, in in the in a file called large data sets.csv. And then once this data has been processed, it will output data called output.parquet. So it will process it into a different format here. You see, the format here is CSV, but it will change it, process it into parquet and put it in this location under the data, data output location instead of the data source. That's just what we are de defining here. And so we want to give access so I'm using this secret key and access keys. I'll delete them afterwards. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay. So it has these. And then you want to print creating Spark session, which is that session up, the, up here. And uh, this is the Spark session you're creating. And you want to access, you want to be able to access, you know, that those S3 file parts using um, this, these keys. So these are the keys we are just calling here through a Spark Hadoop FS S3 A dot access key right here. This is how you get, you get, you do a, a Spark, to create a Spark um, uh, S3 access like that. All right, so you'll get the secrets and, and create a secret configuration for you. Okay, once you've done that, you want to generate a large data set with random values. So this statement here will generate data. So you see what it does? Spark dot range and the range has to be from zero to and the columns one one how many uh, uh, millions one this is one two three one two three so ten million records that it will generate this thing will generate ten million records of data and it will be just random data right it will be random data and it will store it in that path up here so save the data to an S3 bucket. So after creating, generating the data, it has to save it somewhere. So it will save the data in, 
in um, this path. This is the path we created earlier, right? This path of your data source. So once we've generated data, we want to save it up there. And uh, we are using data.write.csv. So we're writing the data in CSV format. And then we want to print the data, read the data from S3. So we'll be reading the data using spark.read.csv. And we're reading it from this source, right? From the, the source path. This is the source part, the one we defined above, still the same. Once we have read it, we'll be able to process that data. So we want to process it uh, using data.filter. And then the data, val uh, the data, get the values, and then uh, greater than, the values must be greater than 0 0.5, anything that is greater than 3.5 or 0 0.5. So once you've gotten that process that, you want to print it out in, an S3 path, you want to print it out to this path right here. And uh, of course, if there is data in it, you override the data. So you're printed it, you're printing it in parquet format. So how do you do it? Process data dot write dot mode. And then you override if there's anything there, put it in that S3 output path. Once you've done that, just tell us that it is done. So this is the script we want to use for our uh, demo today so you can write your own script or i'll put this at the you know at the description section a link to this script at the description section of this video and just remember i will remove this key so you can always um you can always put your keys in later so this is the script we'll use for that demo let me just copy it and let's see if our cluster is up and running so let's go back to emr and just see, it shouldn't be up and running yet, I think. Okay, so let's refresh this page. Yeah, I think our cluster is up and running, guys. Our cluster is up. So if you go to EC2 now, EC2, if you go to EC2, you should be able to see um, instances running. And so the instances running, they are not these ones. Some people are working with these ones. The instances running are one, two, three. And you see a master instance, a master node. I think it should be this one. So if we scroll to the right here, you should see where it says master. You see, this is master and these are slave nodes. So this master will be in charge of receiving the Spark workload and then it will process it using the slave nodes. It will, it will give direction. Say, hey, go process this on this, this node parallel so you see excuse see in this case it processes it parallelly it processes it parallelly which means it gets the data it gets the workload and as it comes and it figures out hey i can send this workload here i can send this workload here and that's why emr is so so important because it processes data in different nodes we have two machines that are available for it to use and process this one is giving directions, receiving the workloads, and just helping direct wherever you know, it has to process the data. And so we will have to connect to this instance, guys. We'll have to connect to this instance. So let's just get the IP address of the instance. This is the main one. So once you connect to the main one, it will, it's automatically linked to the next. You could also do that from here, right? You could also go to EMR. Mm, let's do that. You could also go to EMR and copy the command to connect directly. So when you come here, just go to SSH, connect to it using SSH, and then you simply copy this. And this will point you to your path and all that and all that. But that's not what I want to do. I just want to copy my, my, um, IP address. So we've copied our IP address, which is this one. It ends with a 10. And we'll go to our terminal. So let's clear. And remember on your terminal, you have to be, you have to be, let's clear the screen. On your terminal, you have to be on the path where you downloaded your 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 PEM keys. So my PEM keys are stored in down on in my download folders if i do ls here you should be able to see my pem key somewhere which is primus learning keys 
So you see Primus learning keys .prem here. Yeah, those are my keys. All right. So once you've done that, you want to SSH into that cluster. So SSH dash I, you see SSH dash I, and then you want to give your PEM key, Primus learning. And it, oh, oh no, not that one, keys. Keys, like keys with all caps, dot PEM. Then you want to, you want to log in as Hadoop, as the Hadoop user. So you do Hadoop and you pass your IP address. That's how I want to connect. And then hit enter. It will ask you whether you should connect or not. Of course, you want to trust that host. And we are connected to the EMR cluster, guys. Look at how EMR looks like. It has the EMR sign on it. All right, let's just clear our screen here. And we are ready to go. We are ready to, to put our script in here and uh, get going. So we'll create a, a Python job or a Python script here called, um, let's do sudo vim. Let's use vim as, as our editor. We'll name the file spark job.py. All right. So name the file that, and remember we copied the file from our, Oh no, we didn't copy. Okay, let's go back. So let me do, let me remove this. Okay, let's remove this and copy the file. So I want to copy the file from our terminal, from our notepad here, or our VS code, and come back inside the terminal. All right, so hit escape and WQ this. So we've saved our file called sparkjob.py, spark-job.py, guys. And we are ready to submit workloads to that EMR cluster. And so let's get ahead. All right, so the way you submit a Spark job to, to EMR to process is you use this command spark dash submit you see this is the command you use to submit a spark job to submit a spark job you use spark dash submit and so what are you submitting the job we are submitting is named spark dash job dot py that's the job we are submitting and so you can hit run let's hit run and you observe it do its work guys you see it's it's running it's uh, enabling the spark session it's doing all of that it will create tons of tons of data sets for you you see it's uploading stuff it's creating a context it's creating um a yarn client it's lots of things that it's doing so you can see what it's doing here uh, so this is basically logs that are coming out of this process. And so you can see it's writing pro, uh, process data to S3. So up here, it already scanned everything and filtered everything as we explained in the, in the, in the script. And now it's processed this data. So it's huge chunks of data that's, that, that is processed in no time. You see, it took about 15 or 20 seconds to process 10 million records, 10 million records of data and push it out to S3. So first of all, it generated, it generated 10 million records of data. Then it processed that data. It went through that data and got something that is zero less than or greater than 0 0.5 as we ind indicated in the script. And it pushed it out to S3. So a location called output dot, uh, uh, data output. And of course it named it large data sets. So that's what it did and it did. And then it completed with a done here because we told it to write here that done, you see it. So what EMR does it is it provisions, it provisions uh, uh, tasks, tasks for you. So tasks using the EC2 instances that you have running, right? You see the EC2 instances where the, the tasks are provisioned. The tasks are provisioned to run on different uh, instances. So for instance, it runs on this one, which ends with two, 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 six, and then it runs on this one that ends with two, four. 
So there are two instances, two four and two 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 six. It provisions them to run tasks on different ones. You see, it's assigning tasks. What is assigning tasks is the master node or the master uh, the, the main cluster, the main uh, node or the yeah the the master node that is assigning all these tasks. It will go in and pro do do the assignment, and then then the the tasks or the slave nodes will simply execute those tasks. That's exactly what it did. Now let's go to let's go back to our S3 bucket and see what has happened. All right. So we have our data source, which is this one. Now you can see some data in here called large data sets. If you download this data set, guys, <clears throat> you see it's it's huge. Look at 2226 uh, uh, M MBs, megabytes of data. So let's download one. You see, it will take time to download. It's taking a sweet time to download because it's large. Let's download the second one. You see it's in CSV format, right? This one is in CSV format. So this is the data it, it had to process. This is the first one. Yeah, I think it opened this, this up. So this is it. It had to be 10 million records. So if you enlarge, is it this one? Did it open? I did a, a previous video first before this. Okay, yes, that's it. So that's those are the records. You see? It give this is the second part of it. So it will be 10 million record, guys. So this is this is huge, huge, huge. It keeps going. So large data sets. And then we're getting some anything that is greater than the the 0 0.5 or, or less than 0 0.05 from this data. Once it gets that, it will store it in as in another folder, right? It will store it in the folder that we call output. So in this folder, the data output. So you should see a file here called output.parquet. This is a parquet file and it has huge data sets inside, right? These are data um, that it's put inside. It's processed this one and then put, put the data set in here. So you can see it has a lot of data as well. So if you had to download this, let's see if we can download from here. No, you have to, you can calculate the size, but we'll have to go inside and get all the data. So this is the data that it has. You can download it and see in CSV format. It's processed the data. So if you open that, uh, I don't think I would have an application here that can open CSV data sets for now. But yeah, it's it's the CSV, not CSV, sorry, um, Parquet format data. Let's see if we can open it up in notes, maybe. Don't know. No, I can't. You can't open parquet format in notes. Um, let's see if you can open in something else. I have parquet format installed on my text edit, maybe. Yeah, you see it in weird format here. This is this is in weird format because you know. You don't have we don't have a, a parquet editor. So let's see if we can have a parquet reader somewhere online. Okay, let's see this. Let's select the file. Download the last one it downloaded uh, in parquet format. Where is it? Let's go. No, not that one. Come on, where is my parquet file? Any file that ends with dot parquet, that's what we want to get. So why is this thing not sorting in in order? Date. Oh, 
Uh, this is CSV. I'm not seeing the parquet one. Come on, let's see. One moment. Let's do this. <clears throat> okay. Let's see if we can see it here. Oh, all right, we can see it here. So this is the parquet one. Uh, we try to open from here. So it doesn't actually see park. Okay, yeah, we got it here now. All right, so you, you see, this is the data set, guys. This is the data set, and it processed it, and it was getting just the values, the value, the first value that was greater than five, right? This is it that it did. You see this other value, value two, is you have le things that are less than, than uh, 0 0.5. But the one we were getting was 0 0.5 above. That's how it processes. And then when, when it processed it, it put it in this format here. And you can see the number of record that it got, right, for this one. Just 100 record brought back just the 100 record of that data set. And it processed all of the 10 million files. It went through all of the 10 million files. That's what, what we mean by processing. And grabbed just anything in this value that is greater than uh, 0 0.5. And that's that's what it did and uh, gave us this value. So you go back here and you see that really it did it did it did it its work right. It processed the data as expected and put it in actually different files because it had to break it down um into 21.8 MB so that it's not too large for parquet readers. That's what it did uh, for processing. Yeah, exactly. And so you can also see the logs. Remember the logs were stored on AWS dash logs. <clears throat> and it was created today. Today is March 18th. So March 18th, anything that's created today, this is where the logs were stored. Elastic map reduced. Uh, this is the, that is the instance, uh, the cluster ID. And then this, the nodes, these are the various nodes that process the data. You see, this, this, these are the instance IDs, these are the application logs. So you want to see application logs here, YAN, Hadoop file system logs and all that. These are um, just the logs about whatever was running. If you had an error, if you had anything, you can see them inside these logs right here, guys. So this is, these are the demos. These are the provision notes, notes that were provisioned, all of that. You want to get a report on everything. This is where you get the reports. So guys, this is this is it about um, uh, you know Hadoop frameworks and EMR. You see, it's really fast to run a job in here, and um, you can you can play around with this. There are so many tutorials out there that you can figure out. Um, you know, get get to play around with EMR processing, process some files, get files from maybe um, you know, get files from from Stack Overflow, get huge large data sets and play around with EMR, it, it is very neat. It's very neat, guys. All right, so once you've done that, you can go ahead and destroy your cluster. And to destroy your cluster, not, not to um, incur cost, just go to terminate and terminate and hit terminate. All right, once you do that, it should be terminating and you're good to go. And now, once it terminates, I want to delete this bucket. So I want to delete this bucket because it's so AWS logs, AWS logs. I will delete these two buckets. I created one yesterday. Mm, okay, I have to empty. Let's just do that. I'm sure it will refuse because there's data inside. All right, it did delete that one. Let's delete this one again. Buckets must be empty, okay, because I think there's the version turned on there. Let's delete the data set inside. Permanently delete. So 
is deleting the object, and then we can delete the bucket. Okay, I think it's deleted. AWS, no, it's AWS locks. No, it's not deleted. Now we can delete it. All right, so we've cleaned up our buckets, guys. Um, this is it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, really appreciate you jumping on with us. Please play around with this. Um, discover EMR and the work that it does in the big data space. We're excited to have you at Primus Learning. Please leave us comments, uh, subscribe to our channel, and let's keep uh, pushing out the work. Um, we're excited to have you uh, at Primus Learning. My name is Primus Veku, and see you again in our next video. Bye-bye.